color and texture can captivate and engage. You may prefer a minimalist style, or a layout like a newspaper, or lean towards simplistically chic, or more boho, packed with interesting and useful detail. Regardless of the style you choose, it's all designed using CSS. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. CSS is not a programming language, nor is it a markup language like HTML. Rather, it's a style sheet language. With CSS, we select a set of HTML elements, then declare rules to style them. This point is important, so I'll say it again. The primary purpose of CSS is to select a set of HTML elements and declare style rules to style them. For example, with style rules, we can set text size and color, build a menu or navigation bar, and lay out content in neat rows and columns, or something more avant-garde. What does CSS look like? This is the basic CSS syntax. With CSS, we select one or more HTML elements to style, then declare rules to style them. Let's break this down. This part is called a selector because it selects the HTML elements to style. In this first example, we select all H1 elements. In the second example, we select all P or paragraph elements. These are the style rules. Each rule is defined with a CSS property and a value. A CSS property is a style characteristic. Just like socks have a size and a color, HTML elements have style properties like font size and color. The properties tell the browser how to display the element. This first rule tells the browser to display H1 elements with a font size of 40 pixels and a color of white. Notice the syntax. For each style, we specify the CSS property, a colon, and a value, sometimes with units. We end each style property and value pair with a semicolon. So we define a property and a value. But how do we know what the valid CSS properties are? MDN, or Mozilla Developer Network, is a great resource for everything web. Let's open a web browser and navigate to MDN using this URL, developer.mozilla.org. Then search for CSS Reference. Follow the link. Scroll down. And here is a list of all of the CSS properties. There are a lot of them. We won't cover all of these in this course, but we will cover many of the most common ones like the color property. Click on a property for details, and MDN provides information on using the property. Going back, this list may look a bit overwhelming, but keep in mind, we don't learn a spoken language by memorizing all the words in the dictionary. Rather, we add words to our vocabulary as we need them over time. Same for CSS properties. Going back to the slides, before we can style an HTML page, we need an HTML page. Let's spend a moment and build a simple page we can use to try out some CSS. If you like this video, please like and subscribe.